looking out the door here again once again we just can't win it's snowing again Hello guys and girls, welcome back. We are once again heading back to the woods. Uh, could be an adventure getting in today. We're not sure what condition the road's going to be in. we just come out of literally torrential rain for the last couple days. Uh, as you guys can probably see quite easily, there's way less snow in the fields and the sides of the road here as we drive. So hopefully we're going to be able to go the whole way in because I got a lot of gear hauling in this weekend. Uh, we even got a fancy new bird feeder station, going to kind of be a bird feeder paradise over here. Once we get this set up, I'm going to film all that and show you guys. But anyway, we're going to drive over here and hopefully we're going to be able to drive right to the door because again, I got my cargo sled again, but I would have at least two loads uh, to haul in and I really don't feel like doing that today. So stay tuned here for a minute. We're going to see what the road is like. Well, we're at the start of the road going into the woods here so far. Not too bad. It's icy as we expected it would be, but we're going to see here just in a couple minutes how much worse it gets. I hope we don't have to park where we did last weekend coming in here, but we're going to find out here in a minute. Well, here we go. This is basically where we walked in last week. This week we're going to try to drive in and uh, we're going to see how we make out here. It's pretty icy. But it looks doable, I think. And again, I'm running studded tires in this truck, which are gonna help fair amount. So we're hopefully we're gonna make her in here. Well, guys and girls, very, very happy to report that here we are, we drove in. The road is really slippery in a couple spots, but not that bad overall. So they, uh, the old tires there definitely helped me out on this trip. We're gonna get in here, get everything unloaded here in a couple minutes. Well, here we are. We made her back in. Thank goodness we didn't have to get that cargo sled out and haul 200 pounds worth of gear in here. It's uh, slowly warming up in here now. It's minus 4 Celsius outside, which I think is around 24 degrees or so. And it's up to actually 9 degrees inside here, which is 47, 48 degrees, I believe, Fahrenheit. Um, getting quite cozy in here compared to some days when we come in here. It's warming up fairly fast. Anyways, in today's episode here, uh, we have a brand new bird feeder paradise kind of set up here. Just hang on a second. I'll grab this thing and kind of show you the box. Should be quite nice. She's going to be the uh, bird feeder paradise once I get this thing all set up and assembled. Come with two new feeders and a suet feeder. And I also got another feeder that takes a Niger seed, which is good for the finches and all that. We're going to add another feeder. I might even put a wind chime in this. We kind of bought to throw on it too. It's going to look really nice. But we're going to put it together here in a couple of minutes. Well, all right. Let's see what we ended up getting here. It's a... Uh, Quite a bird feeder. It's kind of interesting how I got this the other night. We went, in, we went into Costco shopping. Got a bunch of groceries. Seen this thing walking in the door. Wanted to buy it, but then thought, nah, I'll wait. Got all the way back out to the car and uh, changed my mind. I thought, you know what, I'll regret it if I don't buy it. Because a lot of you guys would know when they bring things in on special normally, you're going to get a one-shot deal of buying it. You're not going to get a second chance. So once they sell out of them all, uh, they're not going to have another one to sell you. So. And in a week's time, they would have been gone. There's probably only half a pallet of them left when we were there. So they were a good price, too. Very good price. It's uh, quite a setup. Comes with, say, three bird feeders, I guess. And I bought another bird feeder. Whoops. Almost came with a broken bird feeder. That one's kind of nice. Look at that. Nice quality. As better half said there, you know, these feeders would cost you 20 bucks a piece probably to buy 20 25 So the whole thing wasn't that bad a deal. It was 85 for the whole thing. And that was at Costco. I'm sure people will want to know. Sorry about the noise from the plastic. Comes with a big squirrel baffle. Keep my buddies off it. It's quite a unit. The size of that. Oh, look, a funnel. <laughs> That'll work. I'm going to put all this garbage. Another nice feeder. 
Look at that. Birds are going to be some happy out here today, I'll tell you. That's a nice little feeder to put the uh, sunflower in. And a nice suet feeder. Is that ever nice? Look at that. Got the little lid over the top here to actually keep the water off it and all that. If it's raining out. She looks like quite a doings, folks. Nice unit. That was a nice cast iron, uh, or actually wrought iron. Is that ever nice quality stuff? Well built. But not surprising, because as you guys would know, they sell some nice stuff in there. In their seasonal department like this. And a lot of things you can't buy anywhere else, which is kind of cool about it. Is that ever nice stuff? Beautiful. Not sure how it goes together yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. Typical man, I'll read the instructions after. You know. Because that's the way I am. It's the way I roll. Pretty neat base, too. The way that's all made. Some more pieces here to unbox. There we go, the main pipe. Oh, it even comes with instructions. Lucky, lucky. Maybe we'll check them out later. <laughs> when we can't figure it out. Anything beagle? All right. Now. Instructions for use for outdoor use only. Well, there goes my idea. Install the bird feeder station in a choice location. Okay. Uh, that, that, that. Oh boy. Okay. Let's see if we can figure this out. This comes with a pointed ground stake in the bottom, so there goes my idea of putting it on a piece of round bar, but I could also strap it to a piece of bar. The ground's going to be frozen right now, so it's going to be harder to get this thing mounted uh, the way I probably want it solidly. So I'm not going to be able to get it in the ground. So, that, and then we have this. Hard to tell from these little pieces of pipe what's where. These don't have any letters on them, typical. Well, they thread together, I guess, don't they? Okay, well, that makes it a little easier. That thread's on there. That thread's on there. Well, there you go. They thread together, Davey. Set this down. So these thread together. Supposedly. Well, there we go. It's a nice heavy-duty pipe, too. Nice quality stuff. And then this one, I'm assuming is going to go on there. The squirrel baffle goes in the middle of that, I believe. Yeah, that's where the baffle goes. My funnel. Keep my buddies out of it. Piece. That's a big feeder. Yeah, it must go there. I don't know what this is all about. It looks about right. So this has been a bit of a head scratcher. We're trying to look at the instructions for this and try to figure out how to put this together. And I keep looking at it and thinking this ring that's here needs to be up on the top and this is a hook for another anyways I'm thinking well we get two threaded ends here well how can you put these together well upon further inspection of this this actually comes out of here <laughs> this is a an adapter that somebody screwed in and I'm thinking whenever this thing was assembled wherever it was assembled oh look it is threaded on this end now it was assembled at the wrong place at the wrong end so because that threads on yeah the top that's exactly what they did wrong too they had this actually backwards so that's had me scratching my head here for a while figuring out how to get that together but i think we got her now so that goes on there this is going to be quite a unit and that's all that took somebody thread that when the factory wherever this was made and screwed that in the wrong end. So now we need to put this big guy up here. This is quite a large, large thing, I'll tell you. 
Yeah, and that goes right on there. Wow. Big feeder. There she goes. Look at the size of that. She's a big one. Then we have a nice little hook here. This goes off of here. And I think I might hang, I bought a little wind chime. We might hang him on here. And, uh, but there it is. That's a big feeder. Oh, get that, or big uh, feeder mount or whatever you want to call it. Feeder holder, I guess you'd call it. It's going to be a bird paradise here very soon. We're going to take this thing outside. On the upper one. Pull right down on the clothesline, but just for now, just to say if they want to come out, that'll hold it, right? But if the squirrels want to shimmy out, they're going to get on it, but we may have to just try it like that for now. And at least it'll balance it once the snow is gone. We can't really mount this permanent yet, right? Because the ground's froze. I got to drive this stake down in. So maybe we'll use it like this for now. Put the feeders on the birds. though. they're sitting right here waiting, right? So they're pretty cool. Look at that. How tame they are. Well, we're going to have some pretty lucky birds here, I'll tell you. Because we got one pile of bird feeders here. So this one has the niger seed in it, which is tiny, tiny little seed. And that's normally finches. They say we'll eat the niger, the purple finches. We get a lot of them here. Uh, suet thing here. Maybe I'll hang that down here for now. Not sure. Then we have these two main feeders. These both have sunflower seed in them. I'll put one up here. Maybe one up here. I think I'm going to put this up there. And I've got a solar light. little one I bought. That is one bird smorgasbord I've ever seen. There we go. That's kind of cute little crackle solar bulb I bought there just to hang on it and light her up at night. Now they know where all the food is after dark. I guess they'll be able to see it. Look at them coming in already, all these birds. It's going to be cool. Watch this for a while and see how they do. What I'm going to do for now is take this feeder down and they'll use the new one, hopefully. They're all checking it out already. They're not sure what to think yet. Oh, they're on the suet. That didn't take long. That is a bird paradise right there, folks. It'd be nice in the summer when we get it mounted permanent. Look at all the chickadees sitting on the clothesline here just waiting to get on. That is pretty neat. Love these old guys. So this is how much the brook can change around here after a big rain. You look how much water is running through down there now. She's just running. It was all frozen when we were over here last week. Go over that way. Out across the front. We ever got a pile of water right now. That brook is really moving. You guys in here show you. Look at that. It's almost up level with the banks now. There's that much water. The new bird feeders. Take them guys about 10 minutes to figure these out. They're a totally different style than the other one I had, so it's going to take chickadees a while. Look at the water. Pretty, pretty nice. Would you look at how high the brook is now? The water's right up to the bank. This is where it used to be. These are the big rocks out here in the middle. When these are covered over with water, there's lots of water here. It's about three feet deep right now. Wouldn't want to fall in it like I did last week. Look how much water is going down there now. Amazing what a little rain will do, eh? So nice to see the snow leaving here quite quickly. You're okay, little guy. Windows are terrible. They hit these windows almost every day. Poor little birds. Little guy in here, he's all stunned right now. Keeping them warm. Cute little fella.
He's coming out of her. There he is. There you are. What's going on, dude? Just gonna show you guys around outside here a little bit how much snow we actually lost. <laughs> Crazy, the last couple days. I mean, you look at this fence. Last time we were here, the snow was almost at the top of that fence. It's dropped down well over a foot. Thank God, so nice to see it. The little trek to the solar panels over there, that's not gonna be quite as difficult as it was. And what is left here now is frozen so hard you can just walk right on top of everything, right? So, thank goodness. Spring is upon us very, very soon. I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to it after this winter. We've had a pile of snow. I'm going to show you guys a little folk art project we did here a couple years ago. I thought this was kind of neat. It's an actual old barn door, or an old door we found. We were on the side by side one day for a drive up through the back country here and found this old field and this old burn pile buddy had ready to get rid of stuff. They must have tore a couple old buildings down. And when you look at this close, this top, it's actually the bottom, and this was literally, I don't know, 100-year-old door, whatever it is. It would have been red at one time. It's pink. It's so old. And actually brought it here, cut it off, threw a couple pieces of barn wood on it for shelves, and made kind of a nice little folk art uh, kind of shelf in there. I think it looks kind of nice. So this is the other piece of the door when I had actually cut it off. Um, this would have been, I guess, the... Uh, top <laughs> because the bottom is the other part out there upside down but we took this again through a couple little pieces of uh, you can see it's actual barn wood uh, barn wood on there a little bit of uh, black iron pipe underneath made a towel rack and all that on it and it just made a neat little shelf right outside the bathroom near the uh, shower stall here in the bathroom and this again uh, as i explained in my last video if you guys saw it how i converted all my lighting over to 12 volts uh, this old lantern that's what i did when i put this up it's got a 12 volt bulb in it it's one of those edison style bulb they call it i think it's literally six watts uh, it's an old beacon oil lamp which i didn't really hurt the oil lamp i can still put the the central piece there that holds the wick and that i took it out i can pop right back in still function oil lamp but anyways it gives us such a beautiful look in this bathroom it's kind of nice when you back out and see it in there. Nice little room. Well, guys, we're going to just hang out inside, I think, for a little bit here now. It's, it's again, not a very appealing day to go outside. We've had an awful lot of those. This is winter lately, but it doesn't make you want to run out there. Uh, and you've got to be careful, too, walking around out there now in the driveway or anything. There's a bit of, like, bare ice out there. Little skiff of snow on top. You know what that turns into. Uh, we both have grippies here, so I guess it's not too bad. We could put them on if need be, put on our, you know, traction things. But anyways, tonight for supper, we're going to put a nice pot roast. Uh, throw that in the Dutch oven, nice, uh, with a stew pack and a nice roast beef. Uh, should be a good tasty supper here later on. So we're going to start chopping up some vegetables and that a little bit later and get that going, get that going in the Dutch oven. So it should make for a really nice supper here tonight. And uh, Darcy, she's just trying to bed down on the couch here. She's uh, going around in circles trying to find a nice warm spot to, to uh, curl up. It's up to 20 degrees in here now, which I guess would be 70 room temperature for you guys down in the States. And uh, anybody that uses Fahrenheit, minus 3 outside right now. Um, not supposed to get any colder. We're not supposed to get a lot of snow today. We are getting some snow coming down, but there's not supposed to be a whole lot of snow. Uh, five centimeters or something tonight, so it's not going to be anything to worry about. But anyway, hang around for a little while. Nice to have you guys here. Another rough day for a beagle in the bush. What are you saying, Darcy? Say hi, Darcy. I would just call her beagle. Well, this is kind of neat. I just figured this out. That my uh, thermometer that I always wonder I have a hard time converting for you guys. There's our Celsius. I mean, here is your Fahrenheit. Look at that. Just by the press of a button. Brought to you by Davey. Still kind of dumb dumb.
turnip, the filler that people put in their stew and roast. And I'm not sure why we do, but we bought a stew pack this time. Probably should have bought some veggies instead. Not a real impressive stew pack to put in with this roast, but anyway, it'll still be tasty. They gave us parsnips, carrots, uh, turnips, and a cabbage is what came in this stew pack. No potato. We kind of wish we had potato to put in it. We didn't bring any, so we're going to have to do make the best of what we did here, what we brought. Still be very good, though. I'll do it for that. Put all this in, I guess, as I cut it up. Be some nice, a nice garden in this year. Be very nice to turn the soil. Get you guys to. Give me some advice on some of the different things we're going to grow here and how to keep the deer out of it actually because we had an awful time last year. Had a beautiful crop of beans out there and I want to tell you under the deer we have some fun with them over here. Looks like we took a whippersnapper in there and just mow the top right off them after they get into full blossom. So. But we still had a pretty good harvest considering it's hard to believe. String beans. We grow yellow ones or grow purple ones too. They're kind of nice. They're easy to pick. That's what I like about the purple beans. Because they stand right out. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever grown them, but they'll turn green as soon as you cook them. They're dark purple, more purple than that knife. But when you actually cook them, as soon as they get in the boiling water, they turn green. And they're a good bean. But again, they're so easy to pick, you can see them. That's what I like about them. See them on the stalk. And so can the deer, because they love the blossoms. They're tasty. I'm not sure if this is you guys do your roasts or not, but I've always been told you should sear each side for a couple of minutes when you first put one in the pan, and that way it'll help kind of seal in all the juices and that in it. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. Just brown each side just a bit before you put the water and all the veggies in to cook. Like that. Makes sense to me. It's searing a steak. That old Dutch oven's getting pretty hot already, too. This is going to be a tasty supper. I think it's almost time to add the beef broth into that. Because that's pretty much ready over here now. So let's put that in. Oxo time. I'm going to throw all the veggies in. Alright, let's put some veggies in here. She's going to be a pot full here now. Gotta fill it right up. All the cabbage and everything in there. Oops. With the row straight in the middle. How nice is that? That is going to be good stuff, folks. That is going to be good stuff. Look at that. Let this sit for a couple hours. and Once she gets hot, we're going to have to put a grate under there and get it up off the actual top of the stove because it'll be too hot there probably and she'll burn. So I'll have to lift it up once it goes into a boil. All right, guys. Well, we're still waiting for this to cook. Uh, it's going to be a while here. going to be a couple hours. We're just going to kick back and do some things here. Anyways, I just want to put it out to you guys again. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, hit the button down there. It would really help me out a lot. And like the video if you do like the content of this video. And I want to ask you something a little different this time. If you do subscribe, introduce yourself in the comments. Put it in the bottom. A lot of people have already done that. But it's, it's very nice to meet you guys on a personal level. And who you are, where you're from and all that. It's kind of neat to have that little tidbit thrown in there. So again, if you, if you do want to subscribe, introduce yourself. Even if you want to comment in the bottom, trust me, you don't have to subscribe. That's totally up to you. But uh, again, we're just going to have a nice little 
pot roast dinner here in a little while. It's a beautiful evening at the cabin. I hope you guys are enjoying your stay this weekend so far. Birds aren't sure what to think of that new feeder yet. It's going to take them some time to get used to it. So a lot of them are still going to the old hexagon one there in the background. But I think once it's empty, they'll use them all. Another day in paradise. Hanging in the bush. So beautiful here. So beautiful. Well guys, let's have another look and see how good this is looking. Oh, look at that. Right into a boil. Very nice. Another 20 minutes, probably half hour. Should be done. Okay, well I guess technically we could almost call this a Davy Dum Dum thing. Sort of screw up. These are brand new gloves that I went to Mark Zork Warehouse actually and bought a couple weeks ago. And they weren't a cheap glove. They were a nice lined winter glove with a nice cuff and everything in the back here. They're beautiful gloves with leather palms. Um, but they're not welding gloves. Well, guess what? <laughs> my truck, I had to fix the exhaust the other day. Well, I had to get my mini grinder out and I had to do a little bit of, you know, pipe cutting and all that. And then I had to get my MIG welder out and I had to weld an exhaust bracket on the back of the truck underneath on the muffler. Like literally I welded it right on the truck, laid in my driveway and did it. Well, I'm not sure if it was a grinder dust hitting the glove or the welding sparks, a spatter. Uh, I use flux core, which is a dirty wire to weld with. But anyways, on my MIG, um, <laughs> notice the next day I'm going to put my gloves on and pick up a snow thrower and... Uh, Nice hole the size of my finger right through the back of them here in two spots. So we're not sure what did that. But, uh, you know, the palms are still fine. But it's a, it's a shame what I did to a brand new pair of work gloves that are about a week old. Dinner time. Don't be saying any bad words now. Check this out. Oh my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. going to be lovely. going to be lovely. we got to put the gravy on it now. Just hang on. Would you look at that? roast beef dinner with even some gravy on it there that is going to be a wonderful meal folks wonderful meal gonna be a good one well, it's looking like the beagle's pretty well done for the night here we're gonna hang out a little longer but had a wonderful supper it tasted absolutely divine poor Darcy been a rough day for her Every day is a rough day for Darcy. Well, guys, the day is coming to a close once again, quite quickly here. It's getting late in the evening. It's been a long day. Uh, looking over my bird feeder install out there. I think what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to actually move it off the clothesline. I don't like the way I got it strung over top because if the wind blows and pulls in that other tree, the clothesline is going to bounce up and down. It's going to try to move that whole thing up and down with all the feeders. So I think we're going to take a piece of steel bar. I'm going to try to pound it down the ground and make the hole a little bit bigger and uh, try to get that post in the frozen ground a little bit if possible. Give that a try in the morning. Anyways, once again, it was wonderful to have all you guys hang out here again today, spend the day with us and kind of just check out what we like to do here in the woods. And uh, if you want to come back again and check us out in the future, please feel free to. It's nice to have all you guys here. And again, throw some comments in the bottom. Let me know what you think of the video and the, you know, the whole setup here. And again, if uh, you know nothing else, you guys just please try to live simply and remain grateful. Thank you so much, and you guys have a great night.